you've described, to me anyway, one of your priorities as re-underwriting the firm's culture. What do you mean by re-underwriting? So, great. Uh, so if, if we just go to what the firm's culture is, uh, I said it quickly, let me say it slower. I mean, and let's be clear, the firm's culture has something of a reputation. Yeah, um, I understand. And, I, and some of it is, uh, is misunderstood. Uh, and some of it is not for everyone. It's just not for everyone, and that's okay. But this idea of a group of people who are, and I'm serious about this, who are saying, we care so much about being great that we're not going to let things stand in a way of understanding what's actually true. Because once you know what's true, you know what the problems are, you know where you need to, to improve. That core idea stays the same. That culture, how to do this, has evolved every year since its inception, including when Ray was in charge. But now the responsibility of who's going to evolve it, what tools are you going to use, what standards, what principles are you going to put in play, that responsibility moves to a different group of people. And that's what I mean by re-underwriting it. Okay, so how does that happen practically? How does the culture need to adapt, to evolve, to change, to appeal to a younger generation in, what I should add, is an unbelievably competitive market for investing talent? So I'll give examples. I think mm -hmm. examples make this the most tangible. Um, and, um, and again, when I say that it, it's not for everyone, it's a real thing. It's not for everyone. Uh, some people come, they see it. We're not trying to market something that everybody's going to love. We have high attrition in early years, but once Bridgewater clicks for you, 25% of our people have been around for over a decade and 50% and of our people have been around for over five years. But I'll give you an example. One of the things that we learned that we need to change is in this directness of let me tell you the truth and what I think and all these things, if you're thinking about a meritocracy and you want that person in the back row to speak, that level of assertiveness, that level of extroversion, that level of directness might mute that person. But you need, that might be the smartest person in the room. How do you change that dynamic and still create that directness with making sure they're not on their back feet and being able to express their ideas? That's a, a good example of an evolution we're really focused on this year, of that inclusion. How do you do it? Bridgewater's famous for tools. Do you have new tools? Yeah, so we evolve, our, we evolve our tools, an example. We're actually next week rolling out, we have this dot system. This dot system allows every person now in the room to kind of put their thoughts about what others are doing in real time. We changed it. We changed the criteria, we changed what the feedback is like and what it sounds like, and we put out new principles. So as an example of the thing that I just said, one of the principles that we've created is how people should engage with their thoughts. And this is going to sound like a subtle difference, but when I'm saying something to you, am I, am I saying that to you because I need to convince you that I'm right, or am I saying that to you as a question because I want to understand what's right? One year from now, two years from now, five years from now, will we think of Bridgewater as being, quote unquote, more normal? Is that one of your goals? No. No, not at all. I, Bridgewater, I think Bridgewater is outstanding today, and I hope Bridgewater will remain outstanding in the ways that it is today. I think, being, I think it's crazy to be normal in that way. <laughs> <laughs> will we come to think of its culture as a little more normal? Again, I, anybody that looks at the world sees different pockets of people come together around different sets of values. I actually think that level of distinctiveness of Bridgewater creates that unity that then allows us to go and pursue audacious goals, like I said before. Do you and Greg believe as passionately in radical truthfulness and radical transparency? And Bob Prince, absolutely. And Karen Carniel Tambor. The most important thing that brings people together around, around at Bridgewater is the belief in those values. 